Maximizing performance in Marvel Rivals on the Steam Deck has been an ongoing challenge, and my testing has led to some surprising conclusions. In past videos, we've discussed frame generation, using different compatibility layers like Proton GE, and what settings were updated in Season 1. In this video, I put those findings to the test once again, this time focusing on frame rate caps and resolution scaling. Stay tuned as I break down each scaling method and reveal which one ultimately delivered the best balance of performance and visual clarity. After days of tweaking every conceivable setting, both in-game and on the device, I recently tried capping the frame rate at 40 FPS to stabilize the experience. Since I'm using an external monitor, I had to cap the frames in-game. The idea was that since playing at 60 FPS resulted in dips into the 40s and 30s, setting the cap to 40 FPS would prevent some of those fluctuations. However, my test revealed that even when capped at 40 FPS, the frame rate fluctuation was still all over the place and sometimes it would fall even further into the 20s, making the experience less stable than anticipated. Frustrated by these results and the lack of responsiveness at 40 FPS, I switched back to a 60 FPS cap, but this time I was able to apply the cap via the Steam Deck itself while leaving the in-game frame limit off. My current mission has been to achieve the highest average frame rate possible without sacrificing too much visual clarity or overloading the GPU. To this end, I changed the resolution to 720p through the game's home screen menu, rather than within the game. This approach allowed Marvel Rivals to run at 720p while remaining in borderless windowed mode on my external monitor setup. I then conducted a series of apples to apples tests on a custom match, using the same character on the same map, to compare various in-game resolution scaling methods with the frame cap set at 60 FPS. All scaling methods were set to their performance mode, and TAAU was fixed at 50. Here's a breakdown of my findings. Intel X ESS is an AI-based upscaler designed for Intel GPUs, and although it's one of the better looking options, it did prove to be the heaviest on performance. Intel X ESS produces a softer image overall with fewer sharp edges, but it consistently registers a higher GPU load, making it a less attractive option since performance is our primary concern here. AMD FSR is optimized for the Steam Deck's hardware and generally provides a smooth and stable experience, but in my tests, I found that it sometimes underperforms when capped at 60 FPS. Narrow objects and edges can appear harsh, and while its performance optimizations mask some of the drop, it isn't as visually pleasing as some of the alternatives. I will say though, if I were capping the game at a lower FPS, I'd choose this option because it showed the best results in frame times. Epic TSR delivers the best visual fidelity as a high-quality upscaler from Unreal Engine 5 and includes its own anti-aliasing option, which smooths out edges effectively. However, it can be demanding on the GPU. While it performs on par with AMD FSR in some respects, it sometimes feels less smooth, particularly when set to medium or low anti-aliasing. Switching to high improves this but further taxes performance. TAAU is a built-in game engine upscaler that works with temporal anti-aliasing. While it allows fine-tuning of the resolution scale, it can produce a blurry image with noticeable ghosting if set too low. Interestingly, TAAU outperformed the others at 60 FPS, with slightly lower average frame times and a minor FPS boost. This option also rendered distant objects with slightly more clarity than the other method's ultra-performance modes. My goal was to balance the highest average frame rate with acceptable visual quality without maxing out the GPU or overheating the unit. After comparing these methods at 720p with a 60 FPS cap, I found that TAAU, with render scaling dropped slightly further to 48, produces the lowest consistent frame times and offers a slight performance boost. Even though TAAU looked the worst when capping at 40, it was the top performer when capping at 60. This setup delivers as close to 60 FPS as I can reliably achieve, though frame drops still occur during heavy action. I can also say that after switching to this setup, I shot straight up to Platinum in Ranked for the first time. While it's disappointing that a stable 60 FPS isn't currently attainable without frame generation, these tests have helped me understand the trade-offs involved. The gameplay is more responsive and visually consistent when capped at 60 FPS, rather than forcing a lower cap that exacerbates frame drops. I hope future updates from NetEase will further optimize Marvel Rivals so that we can finally enjoy a true 60 FPS experience. If you've experimented with similar tweaks or have additional insights, please share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Decked Out Gaming for more Steam Deck tips, performance tests, and gameplay insights. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.